Hey there everyone, welcome to Mathematics Exhibition Series 2021. My name is Siddharth and I am going to put forth an amazing and very interesting concept in front of you. So, are you all excited to learn something amazing? Alright, so let us start without any delay. The way in which nature is designed is so very unique. We find innumerable patterns, series and shapes that the things in our surroundings are made of. Nature is very particular when it comes to precision and management. If we observe clearly, you will definitely come to know what I want to say. Amongst all the shapes that you see in nature, hexagon has something unique and peculiar. Beehives, insect eyes, rocks, and bubbles when joined together, and many such similar objects appear in the form of hexagons. Do you think it's just a random experimentation by nature? No. In fact, for every appearance of the matter around us has some or the other scientific and mathematical reasoning. Yes, nature is a fantastic mathematician. The cause behind the appearance of these substances have a backing of mathematical theories and we can prove it. Yeah, many of you won't uh, blankly agree to this. In fact, you should not. So stay curious enough for this. Okay, so all of you are aware about microscopic substances. Their size is so small that some are just barely visible under a compound microscope. So it's obvious that in order to fit in the smallest of spaces, they need to fit more in less space. There has to be a systematic reasoning and mechanism for this. Now, do you know why bubbles are always in the form of a sphere? Scientifically, the force and air pressure inside is balanced by surface tension pulling the liquid which results into a sphere. But mathematically speaking, if we enclose the maximum volume with the least surface area, the sphere becomes the most efficient shape to adapt to. But this is when you consider it individually. When you talk about particles binding together, a circle doesn't prove to be the ideal shape. When circles are arranged, even in the most efficient way, they generate empty space, which leads to about 10% wastage. So that's not a good idea at all. Let's have a look at triangles now. Yes. I think triangles tile up without leaving any space. The squares also seem to divide the plane without leaving any space. So now let's see what happens to hexagons. Yes, even they tile up perfectly. So now we know that the regular polygons that tile the plane are squares, triangles and hexagons. But remember, we are talking about efficiency, which is the most efficient. Let's find out. On comparing the areas of the shapes with respect to their perimeters, we see that hexagons are the most efficient among the three because they cover maximum area with the same perimeter. This proves that a hexagon is an ideal shape which the substances prefer to be in. Now let's have a look at a small bubble experiment. We blow the first bubble. Now when we blow the second bubble, it's equal and adjacent to the first. Blowing the third bubble, we see that the bubbles are arranged among themselves in an angular measurement of 120 degrees, which is actually the angle of a regular hexagon. On blowing the fourth bubble, we see instead of forming a square intersection, bubbles keep on forming hexagonal patterns, keeping the intersections to 120 degrees. This tells us that such an arrangement makes the binding force among the bubbles balanced and stable. So we conclude that the external intersections formed in the bubbles are because of the peculiar characteristic of the hexagon, which can cover more area with less edges. The eyes of a honeybee are also made of hexagonal cell walls because they cover maximum light sensing area with minimum cell wall material and more light indicates better vision, isn't it? It's not only limited to the bee's eyes, but even the light catching cells of the human eye are at the back arranged in an hexagonal grid for the same reason. So now you must have realized why the practice of the honeycomb are hexagonal to store more honey in less space. But honeybees do not have the ability to mathematically prove that hexagon is best for them. So how do they do that? Actually, honeybees make round wax cells first and eventually become hexagonal by being pulled in surface tension when wax is softened. Interesting, wasn't it? But does the application of hexagonal arrangements confine to the bubbles and honeybees only? Not at all. Okay, yes, you have guessed it correct that I'm not going to end the video so soon. Okay, 
Moving on, let's take the pencil by which you write. The pencil graphite is a whole bunch of hexagonal carbons, and when they are in the flat sheet, they form graphene, which is the strongest material to break through the, in the entire universe. This is all possible because of the mechanical stability achieved when the hexagons form three-sided joints of 120 degrees. Now, the cracks that you see are formed due to differential change in heat between inner and outer lava. The inside lava cools faster than the outside, which results into forming of cracks at right angles. And as the lava cools further, the cracking angles become 120 degrees, same as that of a hexagon. It's so interesting to see how science and math are blended together everywhere. Basalt columns like the Devil's Post Pile and the Giant's Causeway are formed because of the same principle. Have you all heard about Saturn's hexagonal storm? So even a planet full of dust and gas appears to believe in hexagons. Wow. And if you go on observing around you, you are sure to find many more applications. Happy searching. And before I end the video, I would like you to try this brainstorming activity. Let's see how you do it. Do comment the answers in the comment section. All the best and thank you so much.